A transverse fracture of the mandibular angle will be fixed with a 2.0 mandible mini plate at the upper border and an angled 2.4 universal fracture plate at the lower border. The objectives of this exercise are to understand the concept of load sharing, the differences between a universal fracture plate and a reconstruction plate, both in design and in application, and the correct application of a 2.0 mandible mini plate at the upper border in combination with an angled 2.4 universal fracture plate at the lower border. Loading across a mandible angle fracture leads to tensional forces at the upper border, which are borne by a 2.0 mandible mini plate, and compressive forces at the lower border, which can be borne by the 2.4 universal fracture plate and the fracture surfaces. Therefore, load sharing takes place when the load across the fracture is shared between the fixation system and the fracture surfaces. It's important to know the difference between a universal fracture plate on the left, which is used for load sharing, and a reconstruction plate on the right, which is stronger and can be used for load bearing. Routine diagnosis of this type of fracture should include radiographs taken in two planes at 90 degrees to each other. The minimum requirement is a PA view and a panoral view. CT imaging may be used as an alternative. The surgical approach can consist of an oral approach with the assistance of transbuccal instrumentation, an external approach, or a combination of an oral and an external approach. The instruments needed for the mandible mini plate are two bending pliers, the 1.5 millimeter drill bit with a 6 millimeter stop, and the 2.0 cruciform screwdriver shaft with handle. Open reduction and stable internal fixation in the dentate patient begins with fixation of the occlusion. For this exercise, Ernst ligatures have been selected. However, it should be noted that many surgeons prefer MMF with arch bars because of the increased stability. A 2.0 mandible mini plate with center space is placed near the upper border of the mandible. When choosing the plate, it must be considered that at least two screws are needed for each main fragment and that sufficient distance be maintained between the fracture line and the closest screw hole. The plate is contoured with bending pliers to match the anatomy. The first hole is drilled monocortically close to the fracture using the 1.5 millimeter drill bit with a 6 millimeter stop. Use of this drill reduces the risk of damage to tooth roots and the inferior alveolar nerve. A 6 mm long, 2 mm screw is now inserted, but not fully tightened, so that the plate can still be adjusted. Sometimes it's useful to insert the first screw into the proximal segment first, so that the plate can be used to reduce the condyle bearing fragment. The second screw is put in on the opposite side of the fracture line using the same technique. The remaining screws are inserted. Every screw is then securely tightened. The instruments needed for the universal fracture plate are the bending pliers with nose, the holding forceps with ball tip, the 1.8 millimeter drill bit, the LC DCP drill guide, the depth gauge, and the 2.4 cruciform screwdriver with holding sleeve. 
An angled 2.4 universal fracture plate with six holes is selected to be attached to the lower border of the mandible with three screws on each side of the fracture. The bending pliers are used to contour the plate precisely to the mandible. A small degree of overbending is advisable so that the fracture does not open up on its lingual aspect. If the surgical approach is external, the contoured plate is held in place by using the plate holding forceps. Since this plate is used as a neutralization plate, no compression is needed. Therefore, the green neutral drill guide is selected to drill a 1.8 mm bicortical neutral hole. The holes should not be too close to the lower mandibular border. Although the hole does not have to be drilled at 90 degrees to the bone, it should not enter the fracture, nor should its angle interfere with adjacent screws. The depth is measured with the depth gauge. A 2.4 mm self-tapping screw of appropriate length is inserted. If the bone is very dense, the hole may have to be pre-tapped. Another neutral screw is inserted in the other main fragment at a safe distance from the fracture. If the plate holding forceps was used, it should now be removed. Neutral screws are inserted into the remaining plate holes and all the screws are tightened. The Ernst ligatures are removed. The mandible is now functionally stable. This exercise has highlighted the principles of load sharing between the fixation system and the fracture surfaces in a simple transverse fracture and has clearly differentiated the universal fracture plate from a reconstruction plate. Here are the main steps of the exercise once again. Reduction of the fracture and MMF with Ernst ligatures. Adaptation and fixation of a four-hole 2.0 mandible mini plate at the upper border with 6 mm long 2 mm screws. Adaptation of an angled 2.4 universal fracture plate to the lower border of the mandible. And fixation using 2.4 mm screws in the neutral position.